Okay, now, now summary of horizontal. So we talked about a horizontal shift and a vertical shift in the, in the last couple of videos. And so now we're going to look at kind of summarizing it and then doing a case where we have both a horizontal shift and a vertical shift, right? Because you can combine shifts. This is just a reminder of what happens when you have horizontal and vertical shifts. So suppose I start with an original function f. C is some real number value. If I add C to my original function, the entire graph gets shifted upward by C units. If I subtract C from the graph, my entire function gets shifted down C units. If I'm inside the function, so notice it's inside the grouping symbols, and I subtract inside on the x value, I'm going to shift right by those units. If it's inside the function, so again, notice that's in the group inside f of x, and I add that to my x value, I shift to the left. All right, so inside, it's sort of opposite of what you would think, because if you have to overcome, the way I think about it, again, I find these shifts, transformations are not the necessarily easiest thing for people, and I agree when I first learned them, I don't think they were that easy for me either. The way I think about it is inside, I've messed with the x value. So I've moved the function by subtracting by c. So to get back to my original values, I have to overcome the subtracting by moving in the positive direction. When I add it, I've got to get back to my original values by moving in the negative direction. I have to overcome the addition. All right, And so keep track of which direction I move, which again is hard. What's nice about this for you guys, you guys get to use your graphing calculators. You can always check your answers on your graphing calculators, how it shifted. Right. We can, like I said, combine shifts. We can do vertical shifts. So we can combine vertical and horizontal. So here's a simple example uh, where I have both a vertical and a horizontal shift. So my original graph was the absolute value function. All right, so that's the one here in A, my absolute value function, where, again, this is the piece of the line y equals x. This is the piece of the line y equals negative x. And so I do two shifts to get to my new function. The first shift is inside. Again, it's order of operation. I always start inside. So inside I subtracted 2, which means I have to move to the right 2 units to overcome that subtraction. Then outside the function I subtracted 4. Well, that means i got to move the entire thing down 4 units. And usually we'll do it in two steps. So the first step, we're shifting to the right. That gets the inside, the absolute value of x minus 2. So this is the red function where I move everything over by 2 units and my bars happen to go by two units, right? Two, four, six, eight. So each of my points, you'll see, went over by two units. Right, and I get that new red function. And then the last shift is, well, once I've moved over and I've got now this red function, I now shift that down for, and I've got to do it in that order. I've got to work inside the function out. So inside first was my right shift by two, and then the outside was the shift down by four. And so the green function, and it is easier, they're showing you the vertex here, it is easiest to look at the zero. Zero is always the easiest case, right? The zero goes over by two, right, over by two, and that puts me there, and then it goes down by four. And that gets me, and every single point on the blue function did that. It went over by two, down by four, over by two, down by four, over by two, down by four. Every single point on that graph went to the right two and down by four. So the right 2 down by 4. So I added 2 to all my x values and subtracted 4 from all of my y values. Right? I added 2 to all the x values and subtracted 4 from all the y values. That's what the shift does. It adds 2 when I go to the right to the, y, to the x values. And then when I go down, I subtract from the y values. Right, so that's what's happening with my shifts. All right, so the next example, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do two shifts, and we're going to do them in, in sequence. All right, so first step was to write an equation that shifts the graph of f of x left two units, and then graph your equation. So to shift left two units, you replace the x value with x plus 2. Right, that's what's happening here. Right, my original function was my x squared. So I'm going to the left, which is the positive. I add the x value. And so I plug in that instead of x, I get x plus 2 inside, and I'm going to square that. And that's going to shift me to the left two units. 
you'll go look see that that does happen. If you graph the graph of the dotted one here is my original x squared, the solid one is my new graph. And so again, what should happen here is all the x values you need to subtract by 2. And that's exactly what's happened. The easiest place is to recognize is the 0, 0. It moves to the left 2, so it puts me over here at negative 2, 0. That's kind of my check that I did it right. If I plug in negative 2, do I get 0 out? So if I plug in negative 2 into this function, do I get the right answer out, which should be y equals 0. And I do, right? I get negative 2, which that's going to 0. 0 squared is 0. And so it checks. I, and, and every single point is moved over by two units. The next point, if I wanted to check a second point, would be at the point negative 3, 1. All right, we'll check it out. If I have x is negative 3, does my y come out 1? It does, right? If I plug negative 3 in, I get negative 3 plus 2 squared. Well, that would give me negative 1 squared, negative 1 squared, which is 1. And so it does check that I'm moving the right way. So again, always check your answers when you're graphing these. Right, part B is we want to write an equation that shifts the graph of my original function f of x squared to the left two units and then down by three. Right, so I'm doing two things. I'm shifting to the left two units and I'm shifting down by three. Well, to shift the graph to the left two units, we have to add two to all of my, my x values. To shift it down by 3 units, we subtract 3 from the equation. And so this is the new expression we get. Right? If I write it in function notation, my original function was f of x. And so what I have to do is I have to x plus 2 inside minus 3 on the outside. And so I get x plus 2 squared minus 3. And there's the graph that will shift left 2 units and down 3 units. And so again, the easiest one to, to check that you're moving in the right direction, so if you graph this and checked it, is the vertex. My original vertex here was at 0, 0, and making sure the 0 moves the way it's supposed to. And so it should move to the left, 2, which puts me over here, and then down 3, which puts me there at the point, negative 2, negative 3. All right, and check that that's the case. If I plug x equals negative 2 in, do I get y equals negative 3? And I do. If I plug negative 2 in, this zeroes away, and I'm left with negative 3. And that's what should happen. If I'm shifting to the left by 2, that means all of my x values we subtract by 2. down by 3 means all the y values we subtract by 3. And that's how we get from 0, 0, right? 0, 0 was the original. If I subtract 2 from the x values and subtract 3 from the y values, that will put me at the point negative 2, 3. And it gets me there. And every single point will do that. If I start here at negative 1, 1, if I go back 2, down 3, it puts me here at my new point, which is at 1, 2, 3, negative 3, negative 2. And you can check. If I plug negative 3 in, I should get negative 2 out. Negative 3 would give me a negative 1 squared, which is positive 1. Positive 1 minus 3 gives me out my negative 2, and it checks. And every point should check. Like I said, you can always use your graphing calculator to double check that. Alright, vertical stretching is the next one.